Hi everyone, thanks for clicking in. Today we're going to discuss our one screen version 2 video conferencing mechanism. So to start off, I'm actually going to launch a meeting directly with a couple of my colleagues. As you can see, it's as easy as me clicking on their names. The green is going to tell me that they're available and clicking on the invite button. At this point, all of a sudden our video windows are going to appear. There's Kelly and there's Sufyan. So now we're in a three-way call. Our system can host up to 99 participants in one call. So the, the capability of this system is extremely robust. Now, in this case, what you'll notice is that we started off with a single big and a tile. Now, the nice part here is that we have about five different formats that you can start in. However, at any point in time on any format, you do have the ability to physically adjust the video size of their window, and as well, I can easily move them around. So this offers you the ability to customize every single meeting that you guys have at any given time. And it's very nice to be able to do that, especially when you're sharing documents and things of that nature. So speaking of that, I'm going to have both Sufyan and Kelly share documents. Right now, Sufyan's sharing a document and so is Kelly. Now what you'll see still is it goes back into my standard format. So I have my single big and then my tiles. The really nice thing here, yet again, with one screen as something that's unique, is the fact that we can actually then share documents at the same time. So it's not that we have to share one document at a time. I could have numerous people sharing documents, pretty much as many as I want to, and now have the ability to toggle back and forth between them. What you'll also notice is Kelly's actually sharing her desktop. So whatever's on her desktop, I'm going to be able to see. Likewise, Sufyan is actually sharing a PowerPoint directly. So you can choose to either share your desktop or a specific document that you want to show otherwise. And what you'll also notice, I'm going to rearrange everything real quick. I'm going to go ahead and toss Kelly and Sufyan over here. So very simply, I can easily see my video application as well as having my documentation here. And yet again, I can easily just jump back and forth between the two documents. If you want to compare them, etc., they're there at your, at your disposal. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those guys and resize Sufyan accordingly. Put them down here in the corner. Now, what I'd also like to do is have, show you the, all the different feature sets that come with the one screen version 2 application. Now, at this point, I actually have an ability here to either mute video, audio, etc. I can easily click on mute. I can click on speaker mute as well. So you have all these controls. Additionally, as the host, I can even control their audio and their video. So if I want to click on them so that I don't hear them, I can do that easily right here through my platform. Now, jumping up to the top, I have a content button. This is a fantastic feature because this is actually the ability to share physical documents. I can actually do a file sharing to where if I wanted to, I can go to any one of these documents, I can click on it, I can open it, and then what it'll do is it'll automatically pop directly in here. Now both Sufyan and Kelly will see this and they can actually open this on their side, bring it onto their computer and even save it for their own purposes. Obviously if you had just gone over a document and you wanted to share it, instead of emailing it, you can easily pass it through with our video conferencing tool. And at the same time, this can even be used for sharing um, uh, basically a group chat situation as well. Now, moving down and back into contacts, just to show you real quick, here is where we have all of our contacts. And we have a presence application, meaning that you can know who's available, who's away, who's already in the meeting, and who's not signed on. So you literally have real-time presence of all your different contacts with whom you could communicate. Not only that can we do our video, but we also have an IM feature as well. So you have the ability to chat with any of these people either during a video call or, or, or when you're not in a video call. And as, as you can see, Sufyan's already texting me that he has to go. So the point is, you have the ability to chat and I can easily go in here, type a, type a note as well and send it right back to him. And this is only between Sufyan and myself at that point, so no one else in the meeting would see it if we happen to do it during a video conferencing meeting. And right here is our sharing feature. Now this is what you saw earlier from Sufyan and Kelly. This is where if I wanted to bring up any document on my desktop or if I just wanted to share my desktop, I would click on share and that's actually going to then show a window to them on their side so they can see what I want to disclose to them otherwise. Our dialer feature is extremely important. This is one where if you happen to have, uh, want to make a phone call directly to somebody, you can actually type in a phone number here. If you have an H.323 call or a SIP based call that you want to make, you can dial that directly in here, click on the call button and that's going to go out to any one of those platforms. On top 
of that, this also lists the area uh, where you can actually have your phone number. Remember, this is an audio bridge as well. So at that point, if you want someone to call into you, you can actually provide this phone number. There's going to be a meeting ID that's associated, and they can literally call in there as well. And on top of that, you'll also have your SIP address as well as your H.323 address. So for people that want to reach you from those other platforms, they're more than welcome to do so. You just have to provide that information for them directly. Moving down the line, we have a recorder application. Now this, once again, is a very unique application. Now, when I do a recorder, we have two different options. In this case, the recording feature, if I chose to do our cloud-based recording, you have the option to record all of the video sessions. Now, if I had two, three, four, ten different video windows open with different people, it doesn't make a difference. It will record each of these video windows separately. Now, the benefit of that is when we play it back, I can actually rewatch the video and literally resize these windows, move them around as much as I want to. If there was data being shared, we'd also be able to have the data there as well. Maybe when I watch it back, I want to focus more on the data, so I make the data window big and I put all my other video windows here otherwise. So the cloud-based recording is unlimited in space and you have the ability to save it in this format where it's physically movable and editable after the fact. Now, in contrast, we also have a local recording. Now, the local recording is going to be different in that it's actually going to record exactly what's on the screen. So right now, for instance, if I had a recording going, it's going to even have my toolbar here, Kelly's window. If I happen to move this stuff during the, video, during the recording of the video, it's going to recognize that I moved it as well. So literally, whatever's happening on the screen will be recorded. Now, the benefit here is the fact that you can actually record it and then save it locally. That means you have the ability to then play it back in other platforms. You do not have to watch it directly through this. This is something that can be shared otherwise for people to view outside of our platform. Now, we do have a mini UI button. Simply put, it just throws it on the side. So if you don't want this bar, uh, you know, the, the toolbar out there in your face, you can click on this guy. It goes away, uh, or at least to the side. And then lastly, we also have our network statistics button. This is extremely important for when you want to check out uh, what kind of frame rate people are doing, what kind of bandwidth it's needing. And additionally, if you happen to have any issues with bandwidth, it'll tell you what kind of loss you're having, what kind of latency issues there are. So more so from a networking side, this will actually dictate if someone is having a problem. Now, the other great part about that is if someone's having a problem, on the fly, you have the ability to go ahead and adjust your resolution. So right now, you know, if I'm shooting in high def, I can right click on my video window and what it'll do is give me the option to then go ahead and choose a different resolution. So on the fly, without having to get out of my video, I can actually downgrade to a lesser required bandwidth, which might help out our video case when we're using it otherwise. Now, on top of here, we have a couple of the little icons. Now, there's a contact link here. Now, this is actually really important because this is a way to just on the fly easily add someone as a contact. So basically, you click on add contact, put their email address in, and then off you go. And then they'll actually be added just like they are here. Now, you can also make communities. So add a community. What you'll notice here is mine says three communities. So if I scroll down here, there's a few different communities that are there. So they, these are communities that can be exported in, or more importantly, imported in. And that way, you can actually automatically populate without having to do one at a time instead. So very beneficial there. And then lastly, right here, we have add a speed dial. A speed dial is going to be used more so for a phone number or for possibly an H.323 or SIP based call. You have the ability to go ahead and put their information in there. I'll do this real quick. So click on that, click on add a speed dial. I'm going to put the endpoint address, which is going to be a phone number. It'll be an H.323 address or possibly a SIP address. You then put their name, whatever you want to call it. And then you have either phone, H.323 or SIP and you give it a title, and then right now, as you can see, if I wanted to, I can click on these guys and, and go send either an audio call or a video call with one of the other solutions instead. Thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate your time, and we look forward to seeing you on our one-screen software video conferencing system.